I was told how to turn this on. We'll see if I remember. So you might notice that um, I'm a little analog. So they hand me, you told me the big button, right, Daniel? Let's slide it. Uh, yeah, oh, look, there's a button that says power. There you go. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> what do you know? Hey, it's on. There we go. So, uh, yeah, good morning. My name is Jeremy. Um, I uh, am, am not um, Janice or um, Davion, one of those younger, uh, good looking guys um, that, uh, you know, are so uh, polished up here with their little iPads and, and things like that. Um, I am a bit, uh, a bit old school and um, I was hoping actually to make it through life and not have to be tech savvy, uh, but you know, it is what it is. So um, I envy those that are, uh, you know, ahead of me that uh, are gonna be able to just to go through the rest of their life and not have to do all this computer stuff. I've envied you for a long time. So um, anyway, um, I, just to share a little bit about myself, I am, uh, I'm gonna take this off. <clears throat> um, so maybe you can hear me a little bit better. But um, uh, I turned 50 this year. Um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, old, the gray starting to show. Um, but uh, also um, celebrated 20th anniversary this year. I've been married for 20 years. Also um, was baptized, I shared this last Sunday, 30 years ago last Sunday. So all that being said, yeah, clap, yeah, well, yeah. Um, so all that being said, you guys are going, wow, this guy probably will say something reasonable and, um, you know, uh, mature, but I, I can't guarantee any of that at all. Um, so um, a lot of people are still waiting for me to grow up. So anyway, it is what it is. But um, this Thursday is Thanksgiving, right? And like everything else in life, we're going to do it a little bit different, right? So um, hopefully uh, as we talk about um, God's thought processes of Thanksgiving this morning and um, Thanksgiving recipe is what I, I titled what we're going to talk about today. I, I was curious. And I wanted to throw it out to the crowd a little bit. Um, what, um, what recipe do you look forward to the most uh, at Thanksgiving? Collard greens. Hey, 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 there's a second right here for collard greens. What's that? Roast pork. Roast pork. All right. Yeah. Anything else? Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Like how many cheeses? Three. At least three. Three minimum. Right, right, right. Right. Three minimum. Baked. Yeah, yeah. Nice crusty on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else? Green bean casserole. Green bean casserole. Family. Family. Oh, man, so he's going deep already. Much more mature than I, <laughs> right there. Much, much more mature than I, right? So it's risky to start talking about food right now, right? <laughs> you guys are going to start salivating. You don't listen to a word I say. You know, that's actually part of the plan. Maybe you won't remember. Uh, but, um, you know, Thanksgiving is, uh, um, is interesting. You know, it's, uh, and I, I think it'll just be more interesting than, than ever, you know, this year. Um, because <laughs> what isn't interesting right now, you know, in our lives? How many times have you just said, like, I don't know, you know? <laughs> I, yeah, we'll make plans, and then, you know, I don't know, um, and cancel them, you know, right, at, right as they're about to happen. So, so the second question, I'll throw this one out to the crowd as well. Um, what, um, what are you most thankful for? And so it, it was actually a good segue, you know, family. Do you want to change your answer, or do you want to keep it? You're good, you're good, okay, all right. Um, <laughs> what, uh, what, uh, what are you guys most thankful for this morning? Be alive. Be, be alive, right? Be upright and breathing, right? Yeah. What else? The gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ. Yeah, man, to have it, right? To know, to, to have the scriptures, yeah. Still having a job. Still having a job, absolutely. Absolutely, I've been able to work through this whole thing, yeah. Interesting. Being at a hospital, watching the numbers go up and down, up and down. Yeah. What else? I'm waiting for everyone to answer, so I'm not going to go on. So you can just go ahead and start spinning them out. No, I'm not really. But uh, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot we can be be uh, thankful for. Um, and I, you know, it's really great to um, to uh, stop and give thanks in life, right? Um, 
Interesting, though, when you think about the concept of Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, it's, it's an expression, you know, of a very present, in-the-moment feeling, right, resulting from a past hope or gift. Yeah? That sounds really intelligent, doesn't it? Like, like you got that from Webster's or something. I actually wrote that all my, on my own, you know? Yeah, look at that, huh? Told you, man, I'm, I'm learning a few things after 50 years. Getting there. Yeah, man, at Thanksgiving, it's, it's that interesting expression of what we have, right? We're think, what we have received, the gift that we've, we've gotten, right, from, from somebody, you know, or from, and, you know, spiritually speaking, we're going to talk about the, uh, the recipe for, uh, you know, spiritual Thanksgiving uh, this morning, right? Um, so as we uh, get ready to dive into that, I'll stop... Um, you know, talking so much, and, and uh, let's just pray and ask God to start taking over about right now, and uh, hopefully we'll be good. God, thank you so much for this time to be together. Thank you for um, Thanksgiving, God. We, we got to give thanks. Um, and really, when we stop and think about it, God, um, there's nothing that we experience in life that is good that we can't really reflect on anything but you, God. When we break it all the way down, like, we're so thankful. Uh, for what, what you've done, for what you've orchestrated, for, you know, the life we have to live, you know, on this earth. So, God, you, you deserve all the credit. You deserve all the thanks. Um, you deserve uh, uh, so, much, so much more than that, God. And I pray that this morning, God, you would um, uh, just move uh, through your scriptures. I pray that, uh, that uh, we will feel um, closer to you, closer to one another at the end of this, and uh, really go into this week of Thanksgiving and, uh, and spend it in a way that would, uh, would glorify you, would glorify your son, and uh, all that you've done for us. We love you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to be turning your Bibles, you can turn over to James chapter 1. Um, so, recipe for Thanksgiving. You know, this concept, again, uh, is interesting in the Bible. When you look, I looked at the references just this specific word, Thanksgiving in the Bible. There are about 30 with the newest NIV translation. There's actually exactly 30. Every single entry has to do with worship of God. Every one of them. Either in song or in word. So prayer or singing. Every reference to Thanksgiving has to do with propriety and worship. How we, how we talk to God, how we communicate, how we commune with God. Individually or collectively. All 30, all 30 of those references. And now I know you guys are like, you know, those of you who are not analog right now are going, oh, let me just see, all right? So, yeah, look it up. Uh, you, you know, you'll benefit from the experience. It's really good. Um, but second of all, um, these, uh, all these references um, are, you know, specific about like an approach to God. In singing, in singing and prayer. So um, it has to do with worship, individually, corporately. So maybe we're better off served by understanding the giver and the gifts this morning. Like what exactly is it? What, what exactly did God get, right? What, what are we so um, concerned about? Like what, what do we, and, and it comes down to, you know, what do we ask for, you know? Do we, do we act like God's that, like, Santa Claus, we go sit on his lap, you know, and start asking him for all this and that or whatever. Um, yeah, we can. That, that, there's certainly things that God would want to give, right? Um, but understanding that he is perfect and that he is seeking a response of thanksgiving for, from us. Isn't that interesting? When you stop and think about it, God really actually wants to accept a, a thought process, words, or songs of thanksgiving. Why? Why would he want to do that? Well, as a father, I think, you know, the perspective that I come up with that means the most to me is simply like if I've done something for somebody, my kids and my wife or somebody, any of you, right, ever, you know, you go, there's a, there's a hope that you have in what you're giving, and if it matches that response, and then the, 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 the thanks comes back. When you hear the thanks, you go, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's that, it's that gratification of like, yeah, you get it. Like, 
You understood why I gave what I gave. You understood why I did what I did. And that's God's message. That's what he wants us uh, to know, right? Um, so um, over in James chapter 1, <clears throat> In verse, uh, verse 16, we'll pick it up there. Uh, it says this. It says that uh, if anyone, um, I am not in chapter 1. That's chapter 2. That would not sound right. Uh, I said, I'm like, that doesn't look right at all. It says, uh, do not be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting sad shadows. He chose to give us birth uh, through the word of truth that we might be the first kind he created. So God wants to give, right? And, um, and I do think he would give, you know, whatever we ask for, right? Common, common thought, I don't know if you've had this conversation at your dinner table, we have. You know, what would you do if you had a million dollars? What would you do if you'd given a million dollars? And I believe God would give you a million dollars. I totally believe if you sincerely needed a million dollars, God would give it to you. God's given me a million dollars. I can't tell you what I've done with it, you know, but over the course of life, I've gotten well over a million dollars, I'm sure of it. However, what, uh, what I did with it was, was what was interesting, right? And that's what it comes down to. What, what, would, you, what would you do with it, right? Um, but if it's a good and perfect gift, that's the caveat, right? If, if you got a million dollars, could you handle it as a good and perfect gift? Or, because when we start talking about this question, we don't really talk about, like, a gift. <laughs> we're talking about, let's, let me get a million dollars so I can give it away, right? <laughs> so I can just give it to it, and I go, man, I got, I'm going to pay off my mortgage. Uh, I might pay off the, you know, building mortgage. Uh, like, we just start thinking about all these things, like, we would want to take care of for us first. Right, rather than give. So I, I totally believe if it was just, you know, God's got a million dollars. I mean, that's, that's, you know, like front pocket stuff for him. You know, it's not even like wallet. He doesn't even have to get in his back pocket for that. You know, um, he, would, he would totally give that. But this is, what we, this is what we struggle with. Turn over a couple uh, pages, if you have pages. Um, if not, scroll down to chapter 4. And why we don't, why we don't receive. It's James chapter 4, verse 1 says, uh, it says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from the desires of battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. And when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on yourselves. And we'll pause right there for a second. So, um, you know, I read that first part to say, like, we, do, we, do we see something like that in our world? Do we see something like that? When we talk about money uh, in America, right, or anywhere around the world, how many fights does it cause? How many quarrels, you know? Um, the desires to battle within your heart, you know, about what you want to do with it selfishly. Like, that's what, that's what we produce, right, with something of what we think is so substance on this earth. And it's just not, you know, it's just not, not that important to God. Um, but it says clearly, like, we, we would use it for our own pleasures, and I absolutely would. Uh, one of the things I didn't share with you is, like, I'm an avid, like, Outdoorsman, I love to hunt. I love to fly fish. I like to tie my own flies. I like to do all that stuff. Um, I would probably spend a little money on doing some of that stuff. You know, uh, I always wanted to go to New Zealand and hunt red stag and fish for the giant brown trout that swim in their like crystal clear rivers. That that's all they have, evidently. I don't know. Um, that's where they filmed uh, Lord of the Rings. So yeah, it's just a great, just a beautiful, beautiful place, right? But that's what I that's what I would do with money, right? And that's, isn't that what we would do? Isn't that what we do with, like, we think or we perceive our great gifts from God? Um, our monetary gifts. The simple reason God's not concerned about that is that's just, that, that's of this world. It doesn't matter. Money doesn't matter. Like, we, we need it for certain things, so God always takes care of our needs. 
And I, I've never been without, you know, my need met. You know, I didn't, we didn't grow up rich by any stretch of imagination, but I've never been in deep, deep need, you know. I'm usually in deep, deep want. Yeah? <laughs> That's where we're usually at, right? Um, we, we've been given a lot. We've been given a lot in this country. And, um, you know, so this stirs up, like, the conversation about, like, what is it really about? What are your motives? What are your motives about what you, what you want? And God's concerned about our motives, and, and that primarily is it. You know, what are, what are your motives? If your motives are good, I, I, I guarantee you, like I said, if your motives were absolutely pure and good, you, you would walk away from today, and there'd be a million dollars in your account. You know, if you, but we're, we, we, we're not that way, right? It, can anybody relate? Are you guys different than me? No, you, okay, I'm just checking. All right. So it's interesting, though, that God went in on a different plan. He went all in on a whole different plan. And let's keep reading here on the plan that he went in on. Verse, uh, verse 6, I think. Oh, actually, let's back up to verse 4. How about that? Where we left off. It says, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred toward God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think Scripture says without reason that the spirit he caused to live in us envies intensely? And that's really interesting. I have a footnote, and I just want to read this to you about this envies intensely. It also says this. It could be said this way. Or that God jealously longs for the spirit he made to live in us. Or the spirit he caused to live in us longs jealously. But he gives more grace, continuing verse 6. It says, but he gives more grace. That is why scripture said, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. See, God didn't go all in on something of this world. He went all in on grace. He went all in, everything, everything he had, shoved all his chips in on, on, on grace. And like, um, like was shared uh, on, um, you know, the gospel, like the good news. He went all in for that, that specific purpose. God went all in on that. So, I don't know if you caught that, but in that verse, it says he opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He's asking us to go all in on what? Humility. Humility. He's asking us to go all in on that particular gift. See, God's gift, God only supplies that which is in true character with himself. Things in this world, he, he doesn't, he won't, it just doesn't, he wants something, he, there's something else that he, he wanted to give, right? So what is it that he wanted us to know? What does he want, wanted us to have? Look over in Galatians chapter 5. My first point, I think, well, two things I think he wants us to have. Is he, um, he wants us to know the gifts and sub point ask for the gifts, right? And then secondly, he wants us to use the gifts that he gives, right? He's given the indwelling spirit, and we'll read about that over in Galatians 5, verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 says this, says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law, or there is no limit. It's not, not lawfully bound by anything. It's limitless, in other words. So those who belong to Christ have crucified their sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. So, to understand this right, right, we read about God's Spirit jealously. I don't know if anybody ever, everybody, 
been jealous before? Yeah? So what happens when you get jealous, right? Kind of tunnel vision, right? <laughs> Anything, like everything pertains to that which you are most concerned about. Everything. Anything and everything. So the Bible tells us that God's spirit is just the same way in that, like jealously longs. That's why when it comes to the fruits of the spirit, like the spirit will never, God's spirit will never keep hanging you to do these things, to be loving, joyful, peace, patient, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and to have self-control. Never. It will never stop. That's God's nature. And he says, like, that's, I'll, I'll give this in abundance. I'll never stop giving you in any of these realms. So what are we asking for? What are we asking for? It goes back to the other passage, right? Like, we ask for things that are of this world. Yeah, only if, it resu- only if it's going to result in one of these, right? But I don't know about you. Has anybody ever prayed for patience? We, it just automatically, you're like the most, like, calm, chill, like patient person. Oh, no, I'm just so, no. You get a whole bunch of opportunities to practice patience, correct? You pray for love. Guess what you get? <laughs> a whole bunch of opportunities to be loving, right? Pray for peace. The work starts. And I think that's what God wants us to understand, is that the spirit in his jealousy is going to prompt us to get after it, you know? I mean, I get fixated on a lot of things. And I don't know about you, but currently, I, I, I mean, I, I get, I've gotten fixated on a lot of things that have to do not with much, you know, spiritual things. But um, but I forget to pray for these things because I'm too busy doing whatever, right? Or too busy caught up in this or that or whatever's going on, like right here, right now, me, 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 right? And I'm not really focused on what's going on in, in the, the big, the grand scheme of things, you know? And when I look at the, that list and know that, like, God is self-controlled, I think this is the, that's the one where I go, man... That's probably the one that's the hardest, you know, because it's kind of like all those other eight, like doing them really well, (laughs) you know, like be self-controlled in all of those other ways as well, right? And that's hard. I've been trying to 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 uh, to figure that out, right? But I've also been trying to figure out like what what is the spirit doing? So the spirit jealously, intensely chasing after us won't fatigue. You know, saying, like, keep, keep coming after us. It's like that, you ever work with anybody who, like, just doesn't stop or slow down? Like, you ever done physical labor with somebody? Like, they just go. They just go and go and go. You guys met my, my friend Daniel. Um, he, uh, <laughs> he helped me put the fence up, you know, in my backyard. Like, the guy can just go forever. Uh, and um, it, it's, it's amazing. Or remember when, uh, a couple years ago, when Greg tried to kill us all with his dream? You know, of uh, like all the men, we started, we went and started working out with them and doing pretty much like P90X plus for like, and we've never done anything in life. And we were like calling in sick like the next day. Like, we're just like, why, Greg, why are you trying to kill us, man? We're like, we're just starting, you know? Um, we're beginners. Uh, but Greg, like, he's, he, he goes after it, you know? Like, it's, it's that kind of like intensity. And now he's training like, training for a marathon. He just ran a half marathon. Now he's training for, you know, a full one. Like Kevin, like, used to run, like, ultra marathons. So, like, why, you know? Somebody, <laughs> was someone chasing you? Like, what do you do that for, you know? Um, you can really hurt yourself <laughs> doing that if you do that wrong, you know? But, um, but it's kind of like that. It's understanding. Um, you know, it just helps me to understand, like, hey, what, what kind of spirit is it that God is sending after me? What, what kind of spirit did he, does he want, like, boiling up in me, you know? It's that kind of tenaciousness, that kind of, like, I don't, I don't get tired, you know? Um, which um, I think understanding the spirit, if, you, if you've never read this book, I highly suggest it. It's, uh, it's called The Forgotten God by, by Francis Chan. And the little subtitle under it says, uh, Reversing Our Tragic Neglect of the Holy Spirit. I want to read you one thing out of here, because I think knowing the Spirit is one thing, 
living it is, is something else. But it, but it is interesting what he, what he writes. He says that um, perhaps you wonder why I'm talking about the theology of the Holy Spirit in this chapter. Aren't the most important aspects of life what you do and how you live? Does it really matter what you think about something? These are legitimate questions. It says what you do and how you live are absolutely vital. Without action and fruit, all the theology in the world has little meaning. But theology is still important. What you believe absolutely determines how you act. So while good theology... So while good theology at its best can lead us to live godly lives, bad theology will always point us to the wrong direction. When the study of the Holy Spirit, bad theology can lead to ineffective lives. And worse yet, lives spent striving after the Spirit of God, uh, of what the Spirit of God opposes. He says like he opposes the, the proud, right? Not the humble. So in this chapter, uh, we will, and, and he goes on to say this is what they're, they're going to discover, but highly recommend this book. It's all about, like, God's, like, qualities, those, those nine qualities I just read. Like, it goes intense to, like, how, how much, like, because this is his nature, like, what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? And he talks about the Holy Spirit saying that, like, like understand, this is not, like, this is not a new spirit. This isn't a new thing. Like, before the creation of time, been with the Father and the Son, like, present now, like, will be present, like, it's just, it's infinite, like, the Spirit of God and, and those qualities will never end, they're without law, they're without limit, and God is trying to help us um, get these, and just, just for reference, the Bible says uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31, it says, now eagerly desire the greater gifts, eagerly desire these things, and I will show you the most excellent way. So God's heart is, is if we desire these things, if we go after them, he says, I will show you the most excellent way, what it means to follow me, what it means to be a disciple. So we got to know the gifts and ask for the gifts, yeah, and continue to ask and not get tired of that. But we also have to use the gifts. Let's keep reading here in, uh, in chapter 6. we got to use the gifts. Oh, and that reminds me. Um, Real quick, I, there's a picture that's going to come up here. That is, uh, that's the Fouche Le Fay River. That's French. I learned it before we went, right? So that's Kevin on the left. That's me on the right. And Kevin caught, that, Kevin caught the biggest fish that day. This, uh, when I take people fishing, like, this is something that doesn't set well with me, okay? Um, no, I, I can get competitive in fishing, but this, that, was a, that was quite an experience. However, right there where we're standing, before we left, we went down there. Does that, what is that, like, shape? Is that, so we were there during their 19th anniversary, correct? Right? So I thought, I have to get this rock. And because we're, we've been, you know, doing whatever we do in the pandemic, like, we can't, you know, I, I have too many other projects going on. But that was for Kevin and Lynn, and it's supposed to have stuff painted on it so they can remember their anniversary, and we were in the Fouche Le River. Actually, um, Kevin and I went on this, like, crazy long journey. You might recognize our, our beautiful, like, sunburn in that picture. Uh, we, <laughs> because it was his anniversary, Lynn was like, ah, just go do your thing, go fish, you know, and we did. We took off down the river, went fish for a long time, and, and had a great time. But, um, but I, I've been meaning to give that to you guys, so I just thought, man, I might as well just bring it, since I was thinking about it this morning. So anyway, you know, great gift, L nice little heart, big heart-shaped rocks. I try to find them anytime we go, like, do different things, so whatever, that's just quirky, weird. I told you, you might not get mature things from me, so that's just how it goes. Um, but anyway, Galatians 6, <laughs> and verse 1, we'll go back to the Bible, how about that? Um, <clears throat> it says, brothers, if someone is caught in sin... You who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor, and Chawe and I did not plan this, however, this is what he read already, right? Do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. Man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please the sinful nature from that nature will reap 
destruction every single time. It's not like the fruits of the Spirit. The one who sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life from self and others, the Bible tells us in other places, right? It says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, you will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as you have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. It's not enough. Like most things in the Bible, it's not enough to know. You got to do this. It's a two-part action, right? Like praying about it and then go doing it. It doesn't do you any good to pray about patience and then not actually be patient, right? It doesn't do you any good to pray about loving someone or trying to reach out to somebody and then not actually going out and reaching out. That does, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just kind of has to go with the other, right? So, um, and a lot of what Shaw Wave said, I was like, man, this is so crazy. Like, and it happens like this in church. Like, exactly what he was saying was what, like, I'm like, yeah, this is where we're at, right? In this pandemic, like, what are, what, are we, what are we doing? What are we supposed to do, you know? Well, let me just say this, is that um, circumstances don't dictate what God does. They don't. This, it's already, God has already told us what he's going to do. He's, he's going to continue to do that. So we need to get ourselves in line with that. For instance, this isn't God's first pandemic. It's just ours right? He's always had a plan to deal with social injustice, right? Social injustice killed his son, if we want to look at it from a worldly perspective, and killed so many other people as well, right? He's seen many elections over the world, all across the world, through all the time, go one way or another. The scripture still says pray for those people. Those don't determine what God's all about. The first century church grew exponentially amidst the most intense persecution Christians have ever experienced in history. God's church grew the most then. So he's not surprised at what's going on. You know, I'm just a little surprised about my reaction when I start to think about it, you know. I'm tired. I, I don't know about you guys. Like, it just, it, it wears me out getting up and thinking about, like, a mask, you know, thinking about like, you know, how I'm going to avoid this thing, you know, or who's going to have a conversation with me about such and such things of political views or social bias or, or things like that. Like, it's just, it, I, you feel worn out, right? I feel worn out. What y'all was saying today was like spot on. We get weary. I've been weary. I feel weary. You know, I've been feeling weary for quite some time. But you know what I stopped and thinking about preaching about Thanksgiving this week, I stopped and I said, you know what, God, thank you for the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for helping me gain a perspective that really matters, not a perspective that's just fixated right here on me in this world. Thank you for your perspective, because that matters. You know that song, right? We love to sing it like, give me your eyes for just one minute. You know, if you listen to K-Love, you know, it's like that. Give me the eyes so I can see. Well, you've been given God's eyes. <laughs> now what do you think? <laughs> I bet we sing that song just a little bit differently. I know I do. It comes on, I'm like, man, this is what you see? All the time, like, we're just this first world country that hasn't been exposed to a lot of this stuff for a long time. You know, this has been going on for a long, long time. We shouldn't be surprised about any of that, right? But even through that, right? I can like push buttons on a computer now without worrying about blowing something up. That's pretty, that's pretty weird. Like my wife and kids are at home laughing right now because they're like, yeah, don't even talk about tech savvy dad because you're not, <laughs> you know? But I like, I'm, I'm using a computer for work and like talking to people over it. Who knew we would be Zoom experts at the beginning of the, work, the, the, the year, right? Now we're like so expert on Zoom, we hate it too, right? Like, please do anything but that thing. You know, like, 
Can I get away from, okay, if we have to connect that way. And we figured out a way to even be unified over Zoom, right? Um, what else, right? We, um, in the midst of a pandemic, blew out our special missions goal. That's pretty awesome, you know? Um, what are we supposed to do in a pandemic? I don't know. I do know this. I'm supposed to buy toilet paper, and I'm supposed to have really clean hands, and I'm supposed to learn how to operate and communicate effectively through a mask and isolate well. Why those were not on my wish list when I started the year. You know, I just said, man, if I'm successful this year, I'll be good at all that stuff. You know, no, that's not what any of us dreamed it would be. But so many of us, there's a lot that was dreamed for this year by God. And, um, you know, Carrie Marsh got baptized. All the rest of these people, I think she was a little bit before the pandemic, right, before the world ended, right? But um, Vashon Sanders, Emily and Stuart Spradley, both baptized through the pandemic. Uh, Mason Herbal, you know, Braden White. And today, Bobby Ditto. You know, we got visitors in here. Sorry, I probably should have started out by saying hi to you guys. You know, like, thanks for coming and supporting Robbie. Even uh, your yeah, friends, the Lovelaces, drove up from uh, Springfield. Because Nate and Robbie are, are good friends. Their, their friendship goes way back to when the Dittos were in Springfield. You know, and uh, those guys were, you know, knee high to a grasshopper, as we say, where I come from. But I'm just saying all of this to say, guys, Keep in step with the Spirit. That's what God's asking us to do. Don't grow weary in doing that. You know, let us know. We got to know our gifts, right? We got to know those spiritual gifts. We got to read about them. We got to study about them. We got to do them. Let us uh, use our gifts, right? And this Thanksgiving, let's thank God for His Spirit and what He's doing. And then I'll end with this. You heard this last week, but it's worth repeating because this is really God's heart in all of this. In Hebrews chapter 12, and I'll be quiet and we'll, uh, we'll baptize Robbie. Hebrews chapter 12, starting in verse 24, or 28, I'm sorry, it says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, don't have to worry about that. Let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably in prayer and in song, right? That's what it is. That's what Thanksgiving is. With reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory.